Thanks for tuning in online to Community Church. As a church, we are focused on sharing the love and hope of Jesus with everyone we meet. We hope you enjoy today's message. Well, welcome everybody to Community Church. It's so good again to have you in the house. I want to welcome all of our campuses this week. And I want to say hey to those of you in Suffolk, our Kempsville campus, our Manila, Philippines campus. In fact, you guys in Manila, I'm going to be with you in a few weeks and I cannot wait. Uh, the men, staff, and volunteers that are God behind Bars Campus, Rivers Correctional Facility, Western Branch, let's welcome our campuses. <laughs> We love you guys. So excited you're a part of Community Church this weekend. If you're new with us, my name is Michael. I'm the senior pastor uh, here at Community Church. And man, it's good to be back. My wife and our uh, five kids, my wife Megan and I with five kids, if you're near our church, under the age of 10. And so it's a blessing is what that is. It's a very big blessing. And uh, it's not a message about that. And we, uh, we've been gone. We took a, a road trip. We drove uh, 3,100 miles with five kids under 10 years of age. And I just feel like the Lord is gonna bless our life immensely, just for no other reason in the future, just because we did that. And so, uh, it's so good to be home. You know, it's, it's, sometimes, it's sometimes good to get away, but how many know it feels really good when you get to come home? And I can just tell you, getting to be in church this weekend, only being gone two weekends, but it just feels so, so good to be home. Uh, watching how we launched into the month of love uh, this past week and, and being intentional to serve and make a difference in our community. You know, I heard something uh, this, past, this past week because, in fact, I had a lot of time to listen to messages, so I've been just filled up with preachers. And, uh, and I heard a preacher say something, and I, I really liked it, and, and I thought it might help maybe even some of you understand a little bit about this whole idea of the month of love. And he was talking about the concept of serving, and he said, we're trying to give people a taste. There's a, there's a scripture in the Bible in Psalm 34. It says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I love that, that verse. And, and we want to give people a taste of the goodness and love of God. Because how many know when you get a taste of something that's awesome? I don't, I, now let's we'll go food for a minute. Maybe you're hungry. But you know, you get a taste of that. That's just the best sushi roll you ever had. And you get one. And you're like, you're not good with one. You're like, I want another one. Maybe you're like, I hate sushi, pastor. So maybe you're like, you just love a good salad. Well, praise God for you, right? But so, so, you know, but you get a taste. You get a taste and you go, I just want more. That's what we as a church, we wanna do that every day as followers of Jesus. But we said, hey, in July, we wanna be even more intentional to just serve and love our community like crazy. And our goal is to give people a taste of the love that God has for them simply because he created them on purpose for a purpose and to see them go, I want more of this and to give their life to Jesus. And so, so many great things are going on and, and proud of you for stepping in. And I want you to know too though, it doesn't stop there. We want you to grow. In fact, a lot of times in the summer, I think what we do uh, as, well, as humans, but I think that we uh, do this as Christians too, is we're like, it's summertime. And so if I make it to church, once a month, that's really good. And, and you know, if I, uh, if I remember to, to pray, that's really good because it's summer and we just like to take off in the summer. First of all, wait, how do you think this? It's not fair that kids get a summer break and adults don't. So, so what happens is we try to just give ourselves our own summer break in there. And I want to encourage you, grow this summer. Grow in your relationship with Jesus this summer. That, that's, why, that's why when you hear us as a church talk about the month of love or we say, hey, get, get in a small group. Stop by our Connect Lounge no matter what campus you're out. Get, get, get connected in a small group. Jump on a serve team. Month of August comes. Get in the Discover Track. The Discover Track helps you discover God's purpose for your life, who he is, who you are, and how to live fully alive. Because when we grow in our relationship with Jesus, that's how we ultimately live fully alive. It should never stop for us with the taste. It should be about keeping on eating. Enough about food. I don't want to lose you. But that is what it's about. Well, this weekend we're continuing a message series called Elements. Uh, I'm so excited to continue it. Uh, I want to jump into scripture. We've been talking about what's called the fruit of the Spirit. We're talking about in this message series, if you're new with us, what it is that God produces inside or through the, the man, the woman, who is a follower of Jesus Christ. Here's what the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. It says this, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, 
patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. How do you know just off the bat? You're like, well, I feel like maybe some of those things I do okay at, and then some of those things you're like, that is not produced in my life. And so, yeah, I'm glad that there's three of us that are honest at church this weekend. And so all that means is God's going to start producing it in our life. That's what I believe. Let's get started. Everybody say peace. Peace. We're going to talk about peace this weekend. And as we would begin to think about maybe any of the fruit of the Spirit or what God produces in a follower of Jesus, I suppose we could make all of them, and, and we will do our best as, as speakers in this house on, on, on how it relates to our practical life. But I begin to think about peace, and I go, this is something that, that navigates, if you will, so many people's lives. This is something that controls. If you look at cultures and nations and societies, they're going after peace. They don't want to have peace. There's conflict. How I mean, you know sometimes this could be you, but you know, sometimes people like, like they don't have peace, so they want to get peace. And then sometimes there's people that if they don't have peace, or sorry, if they do have peace, here's where they live from. I just know something bad's going to happen. And I just know I'm going to end up not having this peace. Anybody you know anybody like that? Go ahead and be honest. If they're with you in church today, I'm going to let you be free. I want you to look at them and be like, you're going to get changed by Jesus. Because I believe this. I believe God, God's desire for his people is not that we go through life expecting trouble. That we would go through life believing we could live with peace. I think, I think my problem is, and, and maybe some of you are like me, is is I often live life with a misunderstanding or a misconception of what peace really is. If I think about wars in our, in our world, right, and so it means there's peace if the nation has stopped fighting against each other. If I think about uh, the, the chaos in my own home, I think there's peace just because the kids are asleep. Well, some of you are like, Pastor, I don't even listen to you. My kids are hanging out in community kids, and there's peace just because that's happening. That, like, I, I can think about all those things, and yet, here's the thing. That's not the peace that God offers. That's not the peace that he produces inside. What he produces inside of us, it's, it's so much better. I read a definition of peace. It, it's kind of wordy or heady, if you will. It says, it's the tranquil, tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing from God and content with its earthly lot of whatsoever sort that is. And I read that and I go, well, that sounds real good. Now, how do we do that? How, how do we live our life that way? And, and I thought maybe we would go this weekend from what Jesus talked about in Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, we're going to go through this passage of Scripture it says this, Jesus is going to teach his people, his, his disciples who are with him. If you're new to the Bible, the book of Mark, it's called the Gospel of Mark. It tells a story of when Jesus was on the earth a couple thousand years ago. It, it shares the miracles that he did, why we can trust him. It tells the story of how he went to the cross and he died for my sins and your sins, but he rose from the grave so that I could have forgiveness and you could have forgiveness and live forever because of Jesus. It says this in Mark chapter four, verse 35. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, them being his disciples, let us go across to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took him with him in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. This is on the, the Sea of Galilee or the Lake of Galilee in Israel. And I think you've got like one more week if you want to go to Israel with us in November. So I'll just plug that. We're going to be riding on a boat here. That's not going to get filled up with water, hopefully. And uh, it says he was in the stern asleep on the cushion. There's so much in this passage of Scripture. Let's, let me get through it and then make some comments. It says, they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care we are perishing? He awoke and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Scared of death, Jesus is there. He just goes ahead and speaks peace. The wind ceased, there was great calm. He said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear. 
and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I want to think about storms for a moment this weekend. I want to think about pressure for a moment this weekend. I want us to think about the concept of where is God when I'm in a storm? Why don't I have peace in the midst of a storm? The disciples thought they were going to die. Where was Jesus? Where are you, God? I would be lying if I didn't say the truth. I've had plenty of those moments in my life where I feel like, God, why is this happening? Where are you at right now? Because I feel like I've been living for you and and why are you letting me walk through this? And I'm like, where are you? Jesus was asleep in the boat. Why would you sleep, God? It's an interesting thing in this passage. Jesus said to his disciples, let's go across to the other side. Do you know what my Bible doesn't say? Let's go to the middle of the lake and drown. How are we going to make it, God? I, 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 heard, I heard the preacher say, I heard Pastor Michael say that one weekend, if you live for Jesus, that, 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 that your life will work better and that he's got a plan for you. Jeremiah 29, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, good, uh, not, not to do evil, not to harm you, but that you'll, you'll prosper. That's what, that's what you said, God. But I'm in a storm and I feel pressure and I, I feel like I feel like I start to trust my problems more than I trust his promise. The disciples had no reason to be scared. This is God. He, they had seen him work miracle after miracle. Yeah, they were trying to figure it out, don't get me wrong, but they had seen some stuff that they had been unable to do. And he goes, let's go across the other side. Here's the other thing about this. Sea of Galilee, storms were common. These were fishermen. If you're new to Bible, Jesus called fisher men. They were out fishing. He said, I want to stop fishing uh, for fish. I want to help you lead people to, to me. So, but they knew how to fish. There's no doubt that they would have been out on this sea, this lake before, when storms would have got rough and crazy. And so then you read that. They were afraid they were going to die. Why? I think this is what happens to us, and I think this is what Jesus was showing. Sometimes we can be good with expected storms. Sometimes we can be good knowing, you know what? Five kids, that's going to be hard. Don't be surprised. (laughs) Getting up and going to work, some days it's going to be hard. Don't be surprised. But what about the unexpected? Do, do, I, do I trust the unexpected problem more than I trust God's promise? If you're taking notes, write this down, and I want you to really own this. The storm can't steal your significance. The storm that is raging in your life can't steal your purpose. The storm that's going on in your life can't steal your value. The storm that's going in your life can't steal your identity. The storm, the pressure that's going in your life, it doesn't have the power to take you out if you're living for Jesus. Where is peace? Where is peace in the midst of a storm? In the boat. It's right there. I'm a little fired up. I've preached in two weeks and I feel like 
I feel like I'm just yelling, so I'm sorry I won't yell this much next weekend. <laughs> so fun. You know, if you're part of our church, you know this. Um, sometimes I go into a message and I'm not, even as I'm preparing for it, I pray, I plan our message series and, and, and input from others too. And, and, and so we, we believe God shows us where we need to go and we're ready to change if we need to, if there's a, a now word that, that the Lord uh, puts on our hearts to share. But, but no matter what, it's always like I'm gonna preach something I'm going through. And, and, and quite honestly, you know, to talk about this whole concept of peace, uh, it, it's like deep inside peace that I wanna talk about this weekend. Maybe even a month ago, it wasn't necessarily where I was for sure I was living from and, and understanding. I want to tell you, like, God has, maybe it's because I've had 3,000 miles to think about it, but, like, it's, I, I feel like this is a, it's changing my life Be, because, because I have storms and because I have pressure. And I really want to stop letting them steal my peace. If you're taking notes, write this down. Peace is not the absence of a storm. It's the absence of, why don't we say that out loud? Anxiety that things are not gonna be okay because of the storm. See, we're like, if Jesus was actually in the boat, we wouldn't have a storm. No, 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 no. Jesus is in the boat, there is a storm. The deal is, I'm not anxious about whether or not we're gonna make it to the other side. Why am I not anxious about whether or not we're gonna make it to the other side? Because Jesus said, let's go for a ride to the other side. I wonder if I'm doing something wrong and that's why I'm walking through this difficulty. Well, I'm not gonna tell you that there's, that there's not true right, um, consequences to decisions we make on the earth, right? We do have to deal with those, but I wanna tell you this. No storm can steal your peace. No storm can steal your peace. I, I, I was stopped by a person this past week and, and I, I don't know, like one of the things I love about living for God is, and just, you know, maybe you don't know this, but like sometimes even as a pastor, um, you just really need a specific way to be encouraged sometimes. And, 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 and do you know sometimes you don't even know exactly what you need? Therefore, you can't go ask somebody to do it for you. How many just know? I know that's kind of maybe just a little heady, but I just mean like you don't really know how to ask. He's like, I just don't, I don't really know. I just, it's not. And I do know somebody that does know. His name's Jesus. And, and, and this past week, I was stopped by somebody, and, and they're in an unexpected storm. And, and they just began to share with me the peace that they had, even in this unexpected storm. Not because the storm didn't exist, but because they weren't letting anxiety control them and the future. And they shared with me that the reason was because of the family they have at this church that have come around them, that have encouraged them, that, that, that have helped them pray, that, have, that have, have showed them that they're gonna show up. And, and in that moment, do you know sometimes even when you're going through a storm, the whole reason you're going through it is because God's really got somebody that's going through their own storm, that he really wants you to be the one that encourages them. And all he's asking me to, me to do and all he's asking you to do is no, I don't have to be anxious It'll work out. C.S. Lewis said this, life with God is not immunity from difficulties, but peace in difficulties. Here's what the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter four. If you've never heard these two verses of the Bible, I hope that you will learn them, memorize them this weekend. He said, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, 
Verse 7, that peace of God is the peace that the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, that the Spirit produces inside in partnership with me, me and God, you and God, in our relationship, not that we're perfect, that he is. It's when we trust him, the peace of God that will be produced inside of us. It surpasses all understanding. It will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I don't know if any of y'all... Um, being a military community like we are. Um, are there any submarine peeps, any of our campuses? I know that's probably not the real terminology, submarine peeps, but when you're not military, <laughs> I just trust that you know my heart when I come that direction. But I've always found, su I've always found submarines fascinating because you should just die. Get in this cylinder and just go way down. You'll be fine, stay there for a few months. We talk about pressure. Imagine, just imagine living in the, if you've never done it, imagine living in those close quarters. I got five kids, it's fine, I'll keep them. And so I did some research about how a sub works this past week. Because I was thinking about the storms of my life and your life and the pressure that comes and how do we make sure the pressure doesn't, right, doesn't, doesn't crush us. So a submarine has to be pressurized based on the depth that it's in. It's filled with air, it's filled with water and, and I am not scientific and I read a lot and I'm like, this sounds really cool, I don't really know what most of it means, but I know that if it's not pressurized correctly, it will be crushed and everybody will die when they go deep. And when they come back up, the same is true. Enter Philippians chapter four, verse seven. And the peace of God pressurizes your heart so that everything that comes against you doesn't have the power any longer to actually crush you because it's his peace inside. So I'm like, this is giving you my thoughts from this week. What are my peace leaks? I enunciated well. What, what are those things that, that, that cause, cause a leak? What are those things, you, and, and, and all of us, we could go down what it is, and you know what it is, there's something, man, they just get fired up. I was all at peace, and then I heard this one thing, and I'm so frustrated, I don't have peace about anything because of this one thing. Maybe just me, but I feel like it's probably 99.9% .9 of us. So how do, I, how do I stay pressurized? I pray. Be anxious for nothing. But pray. Here's the decision I have to make that's really hard, I think. Do not chase something externally that can only be produced internally. I'm like trying to figure out how to make this work better and how to make this person better, how to make this relationship better, how to make this work better. Right? How do I get all the external things in my life good so that there's peace? And I'm like, well, that doesn't actually give me peace. What gives me peace is when I let production inside come from my relationship with God. How do I strengthen my relationship with God? Prayer. Prayer produces internal peace. Prayer is what produces internal peace. How many problem solvers? Church. That's why this is hard for us. Because if you're a problem solver, right, you can solve your way to peace. I can figure this out. But we don't end up with peace. We end up with frustration. 
We end up with maybe things on the outside, but yet the inside still isn't there. I, I want to make sure you know I'm talking to those of you right now that have made a decision to live for Jesus, that have made a decision to follow Jesus. If you've not yet made a decision to follow Jesus, that is your next step. There is not peace being produced inside without Jesus. You're going in the boat across the sea. Jesus is the only one that can speak peace to the storm. But for those of us that have already made that commitment, and again, if you haven't, I pray this weekend you make that decision. One of the best verses in the Bible, I believe, that makes it so clear, how can I actually stay with my heart pressurized, if you will, in the place of peace, comes from an Old Testament book in Isaiah, and it says this in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. It says, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. I love that word stayed. What do you focus on? What do you focus on in life? What does your mind get, get fixated on? I, I feel like what I would like to say is if I was in a boat going across the Sea of Galilee 2,000 years ago and Jesus was in the boat, that I would have been focused on the fact that Jesus was actually in the boat with me. But instead, what they were focused on and what I feel like I get focused on sometimes is all these problems. And I'm like, I don't know why I don't have peace. It's because of what your mind is focused on. It's because of what my mind is focused on. It's not that we don't have the problems. It's not that we don't have the pressure. It's not that we don't have the storms. It's understanding the spirit of God is inside of us as followers of Jesus and it's very purpose is to produce peace in the midst of anything together. I thought about this saying, I don't know if this still is something people say, but I feel like I've heard it said before like this, um, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Anybody just lift your hand, have you ever heard a saying like that? Well, it really is popular, all right. You never know. You never know. Do you know what that says? You need to make sure you focus on the devil more than you focus on God. Think about that for a moment. Think about some of the things that we just don't necessarily realize how it, how it shapes our mind and the way we think about life. So we begin to teach ourselves and think, you know what you should do? Th th those things that are difficult, maybe those people you don't trust, maybe those things, you need to make sure that you need to make sure you Focus on them. And then we come to God and we go, why don't we have peace? And he goes, because your mind's not stayed on me. You're not focused on me. Shift your focus. Because if you're trying to get peace by controlling, it will never work. And every parent said amen. <laughs> Listen, it's like this. Peace is not about my effort, it's about God's promise. Peace is not about my effort. Jesus, and this isn't the topic of this message, he said blessed are the peacemakers. He was very intentional to talk about that we do, do we do serve, that we do love, that we do work towards peace. But I'm talking internally today. Internal peace is not about my effort. Internal peace is about God's promise. Finally, I want to give us this thought, and then I'll close with some scriptures. It's simply this, peace is a journey, not a destination. The moment we think we've arrived, all right, you know what? Today, I feel at peace. All of us have had a day like that. Maybe you don't even remember the last time, right? But all of us have had a day where we're like, you know what? It's just peace. It's like, I I. I I feel like everything's gonna be okay today. And I felt that. And then you know what happened? The next morning you got up and then you know what came into your mind? I don't know if we're gonna make it. I, I don't know if it actually is gonna be okay. Yes, I felt better at 9 p.m., but now it's 5 a.m. And I don't still have peace. 
It's daily, it's a journey, it's not a destination. But here's what I know about every single journey. It has to start. It has to start. And God gave some pretty cool encouragement to us. Psalm 37, verse 37, look at those who are honest and good for a wonderful future awaits those who love peace. Psalm 85, verse eight, listen carefully to what God the Lord is saying. For he speaks peace to his faithful people, but let them not return to their foolish ways. Psalm 119, 165, those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble. This one right here, I just, I just wanna tell you as simply a guy who gets it wrong a lot but is trying to live for God, that when I read my Bible more, when I pray more, I have more peace. And can I tell you, as I know your pastor been like, I need to pray more. And so I've been trying to pray more the last couple months and I don't think I'm anywhere close to where I need to be. Um, but you know what? I have more peace and you know what the peace says to me? It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Could you just know today, if you're following Jesus, or if you make a decision today to start following Jesus, that the, the great promise he makes us in the storm and in the pressure, it's gonna be okay. And here's what I love about our God. In John chapter 10, verse 10, he doesn't stop with it's gonna be okay. But he says, I'll give you a rich, and satisfying life. So where are you on the journey? Do you need to start the journey this weekend of knowing that you're gonna cause your mind to be focused on God? Are you walking in that peace life? Because I think there's a lot of us that have storms and some of us were at church this very weekend and you came because the pressure was building up and you're like, I've gotta make a change. I've gotta do something. Or some of you have been coming to church every weekend for a long time, and this weekend, I, I feel it because I trust the Lord that, that as we would talk about this, there's, there's pressure mounting all across, and it's been starting to steal. It's, your peace has been leaking. And the Lord throws out an invitation to every one of us this weekend to go get your mind stayed on me. Don't be, don't be anxious. Because... You might ride, you might only be halfway across the lake. Like that's the most unencouraging thing you ever say, Pastor. Tell me I'm almost like the lake ends right here. I'm like right there. But you know what? The lake might end here and you're still right here. And he goes, I didn't say we're gonna go out in the middle and die. I said we're going over there. So as the wind's whipping and as the pressure's hitting you, and you're like, this isn't necessarily how I would have caused this cruise ship to roll. He goes, don't be anxious. Get your mind focused on me. Could you close your eyes with me to all, all of our campuses this weekend? I, 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 wanna, give, I wanna give this first opportunity to respond here today. If you're, if you're, if you've listened to this message, been a part of our service today, and, and if you were honest with yourself, you know this is a truth for you. The reason you don't have peace inside is because you've not decided to truly follow Jesus. You've not decided that, that he really is the answer. You're, you, you've been just kind of going, yeah, I think I can figure it out on my own and just add a little bit of Jesus. You've not decided. I need to decide I'm gonna all in live for Jesus. And you wanna make that decision today. Or if you're here and, and you made that decision a long time ago, but you know life's gotten busy and storms have come and, and you find yourself at church this weekend or watching online and, and the truth is, 
You've not been living that way. And you today, you're inside, you're like, this is my moment. I, I'm, I'm coming back. I'm, 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 I'm beginning. I'm renewing a relationship with God. I want the peace he produces because I know I live for him. And you're making that decision today. I want to invite you to be very bold. Just lift your hand up in the air. Say, that's me right now. I'm making that decision right now. Awesome. Awesome. Just keep your hand up for a couple moments. Awesome. I'm so proud of each of you lifting your hands. Just a couple more moments. All of our campuses, if that's you, lift your hand up right now. I'm beginning, I'm renewing a relationship with Jesus today. Right now. Right now, I'm living for him. And put your hands down. I'm gonna ask you to pray this prayer with me. Let's all pray it together. If you raised your hand, if you're already an all-in follower of Jesus, let's pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for second chances and for third and for fourth and for fifth and on and on. Today, I've decided all my trust, all my hope is in you. I believe I can live with peace that surpasses understanding because you and I are united. I thank you, Jesus, for the life you give me. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching the service today. If you began or renewed your relationship with Jesus today, or you need prayer for something going on in your life, please let us know. If you're watching on a computer, you can do that by clicking on one of the buttons below. Or if you're watching us on the Community Church app, you can select Contact Us under the About Us tab. We'd love to know your story and how Jesus is using Community Church to impact your life. Thanks again for hanging out with us, and we hope you'll keep watching and taking next steps in your relationship with Jesus.